Welcome to Motherhood and Podcast. My name is Anna, and I am joined by my co-host, Sophia. Um, We are here talking about motherhood and everything else, because we are not just mothers. So, welcome to the show. Last week, we talked about my birth story, and this week, we are talking about Sophia's birth story. Or rather, she's going to be talking about her birth story, um, and I'm going to be listening. So, I'm super excited to hear about the birth of her daughter. Um, but before we hop into that, how are you? How have you been? I've been... Great! <laughs> if we're gonna be honest, Anna's stressed out, I'm a little stressed out. <laughs> Look, we're, <laughs> we're coming to the podcast on two wheels, y'all. It's weird. <laughs> rolling in like skid tires. <laughs> yes, we had, or she had a bunch of things going on, trying to put the baby down. And we try to get our babies to sleep before the podcast starts. And so before the podcast starts, we are like an anxious mess, usually. But my husband has our daughter right now, which is calming me down that she's not here, that I don't have to deal with her, but also you're always worried about your baby if she's gone. So. But my week has been pretty good. Christian is on the tail end of working so much. Um, today's actually his first day off in, I think he worked like 12 days straight. Um, so. so. Today was his first day off in a while, um, so we'll be doing some family things later on after this, and I totally knew what I was going to say like earlier about our week, but now it's gone. Um, but my garden is doing very good. We had a lot of rain. And plants just love rainwater better than city hose water. Um, so they just took off. So I'm not really happy about that. How was your week? Sorry. Um, oh, my week has been good. Um, Perfect your week coming up. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, that's mostly what it's been filled with is prepping for a one-year-old's birthday party this Saturday, this weekend. So, um, very bittersweet. Like, I'm so excited to see him grow and celebrate his first birthday, um, which it'll be another week before he actually turns one. Um, We're just having it earlier. um, Since it's, it's such a busy season, like, between... We have a lot of birthdays around this time of the year. Um, He actually shares a birthday with my brother. And um, Mother's Day season and graduation season. I have a couple cousins who are graduating out of state. um, So we've been traveling for parties and things like that. Um, I'm in a wedding (laughs) that's happening in a couple of weeks. So there's lots going on. Um, So just staying very busy. But... um, yeah excited for his birthday but it's also so like it's got me so emotional about him turning one they grow so stinking fast like it's ridiculous and i'm not happy about it (laughs) i'll be honest i'm not happy about it i i don't know People, I've, I've heard people say that, like, it's selfish to want your babies to stay small. And I, like, to a degree understand what they're saying. Like, you have to let them grow up and, you know, become older, become adults. Yes, I understand. Like, it, it, you can't stop it, even if you wanted to. But, like, there is something so just so special about those first few months and 
years of life. Just like the littleness. They're so small and tiny and sweet and they are always, you know, sweet and small in your eyes. But like, yeah, I'm just sad that he's growing up so fast. It's He's yeah. starting now to, um, like, so much more recently, he has been babbling, like, he really thinks he's telling you something. Like, he really <laughs> thinks he's having a conversation with you. And you're just like, uh-huh, wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> I wish I knew what you were telling me. <laughs> and it's so adorable, but he just, he's like, a blah, 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 blah. And, like, he'll just look at you and do all the head motions and the body language and everything. Like, he really thinks he's talking to you. And it's precious. But that being said, I know that he is going to start just like, actually saying stuff soon. And he's going to be truly talking. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> he has so much personality already without the words. I know that once he has the capacity to tell me what he's thinking, it's going to be interesting. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I also am celebrating not just a year for my baby. I'm celebrating a year of surviving motherhood. And I am proud of that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> proud of that. Um, there has been many days where it has been purely survival. Other days we have thrived. Um, but the first year is hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, I'm not saying that other aspects of motherhood are not. I am sure that, that is the case and I will find out as time goes on. But man, whew, figuring it out, especially with the first child, is it's its own giant to tackle. So feeling very proud of myself and my husband. Our first year of parenthood is almost in the books. So yeah, that's my big thing right now. And just working through the emotions of that, trying to keep up with the chaos of everyday life and plan a birthday party at the same time. So yeah. And Dawson's six months today, so. And it, I heard it's so funny. I'm feeling hitting that milestone. Say that again. I said, so you know how I'm feeling hitting that milestone. Yeah. She's just started going up on her hands and her knees, like the crawling position, yesterday. <clears throat> um, so I was like, oh, she's getting so big. And I was just holding her today when I was nursing and like used to be like I could just hold her right here and now she's like <laughs> down the length of my body. Um so yeah, it's sad. But it's also fun and cool to watch them. It's learn new things and do new things and I always used to think like when I was pregnant I would have like Seems like when I was pregnant, I would have much more emotion about her growing up. Like, I didn't even want her to come out because then she would be, like, a day old. But now it's, like, it's sad, but I'm also excited, more excited than I was when I was pregnant. Yeah, it's definitely a toss-up of emotions because, like, you love seeing every little new thing that they do. But then simultaneously, it's like, oh, they're getting so big. So, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to walk through. Um... But, you know, it's just one of those things you navigate as a mom. They all have to go through it. Some of us probably with more grace um, than others. <laughs> but you, you make do. But um, let's go ahead and dive right into your birth story. Um, this is six month celebration of her life. How exciting. I love that. Um, and feel free to just start wherever you think is the best place to start, whether that is um, like conception or your journey to conceiving her. And that's my little one coughing in the background. Hopefully stays asleep. Um, he's been kind of congested the last few days, so yeah. 
Now it's like breaking up, so he's just hacking up mucus everywhere. It's disgusting. <laughs> Chasing around a toddler with a tissue all day. Let me wipe your nose. That's all I'm doing, basically. Um, yeah, so wherever you think is the best place to start um, to tell her story. Oh gosh. So I've only, I've told her birth story twice before, one on another podcast and then one on a live, and both, on both of those occasions, I started at, like, conception and on. Is that okay? Or is that too perfect? Whatever feels like the right place to start for you. (sighs) Okay. Um... Okay, I will start at conception. So, me and my husband had been married a year and a half when we got pregnant. Um, The whole year and a half, we were not on birth control, using condoms, or any other methods that you could use. Um, We did... um, I was tracking my basal body temperature, um, so I was aware of, like, my peaks and all the hormone and temperature shifts that happened throughout the month. Um, so there were certain months just a bit at the beginning of our marriage that we avoided, but we ended up not avoiding. <laughs> so it was like we had planned on, like, avoiding some days, but we never really did. Um um, cause when we first got married, we were, we were both, we both had the conversation of, well, are we going to try and prevent, um, anything or are we just going to see how it goes? And we were both on the same page of, I guess they call it having an open womb. Um, that could be a whole nother conversation, but, um, we just trusted the Lord that he would give us a baby. Um, whenever he deemed it necessary and the perfect timing. So, um, yeah, we never prevented anything. Never. Um, I have never been on birth control. Um, so, um, like with that, I was expecting to get pregnant right away being married, um, which didn't happen. So yeah, each month I was like, I would get so excited, like, oh, I'm going to get pregnant this month. Oh, I'm going to get pregnant this month. Um, And each month it kept coming, and I wasn't pregnant, and I would get disappointed. Um, Even though at the same time I was happy because we were definitely in a situation living with family that it wasn't what I personally wanted like I know you can have babies and live with your family I know cultures do that all over the world um but I really wanted to be in our own home especially since at that point in my mind I wanted a home birth um so yeah um Then around the eight, nine to 10 month mark, I started getting really defeated and like, why is this happening? Is there something wrong with me? Um, And definitely I would say looking back, there are nutritional issues that were going on. Um, Lack of calories that could have been contributing to it. and some other things that definitely could have been the reason that I wasn't getting pregnant or that it was taking a little bit longer. Um, but also it could have been the Lord not wanting us to get pregnant. It could be both at the same time. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, a year and a half. It was January, so my birthday. We went on a camping trip um, in the winter winter camping trip. It was really fun. Uh, We were living up in Oregon at the time. And we came back. um, And then a couple days later, we 
um, had sex, obviously. That's how you get pregnant. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I didn't even give it a second thought because at that point I just kind of had given up. Um, if you're not watching the video, I'm like ear quoting, giving up. Um, just kind of like handed it off like, well, I guess I'm just going to like let go of this like emotional like hold that I have on it in my mind and it's going to happen when it's going to happen. And I just need to enjoy, enjoy the situation we're in currently. Um, cause I know there is time now that I have a six month old where I wish it was just me and my husband sometimes. Um, not that I don't love my child. <laughs> um, you're telling me that you don't love every single crying episode that your child has? Like, you're not just totally in love with every single aspect of motherhood? Shocking. I can't believe you. How <laughs> <I'll> dare. <laughs> I'm joking. It's okay to not love every single area and aspect of motherhood. That's, it's not like an all inclusive. You either just love it all or you don't, or you're a, you, if you don't love it, you're a bad mom. That's not true. There are some people in the Instagram verse that will make you feel that way. It's like, you know, I'm all about romanticizing motherhood and loving it and enjoying it and trying to find the best parts of it. But like, there's just some moments that you're not gonna enjoy, and that's okay. <laughs> it's just life. It's all right. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um. So yeah, I just relinquished relinquished the control I thought I had. Um. And then, so I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm going to, because I had taken pregnancy tests throughout the past year. Um, so I just stopped taking tests. Um, and just didn't really think about it. Like, obviously it was in the back of my mind, but, um, it wasn't like, I need to get pregnant. I need to get pregnant. Like it wasn't how it was in the past year. Um, so, uh, I, at the time I was working as a teacher's aide at a Christian school. So, um, it must have been my birthday, the, mi the middle of the next month, because my birthday is January 30th, so the end of the month, so the middle of the next month, February. Um, I was, like, expecting my period to come. Um, I had some cramping, like, um, very light. Um, lower abdominal cramping, and I was like, oh, my period's probably going to come soon. Um, and throughout, like, the work week, I would go to the bathroom and just check, um, that I didn't need to put a pad on. Um, but it just was, like, light cramping every so often for a couple of days, and I was like, hmm, that's weird that it's not showing up, but I didn't give it a second thought at all. Um, cause that just wasn't in my brain. Um, and then that, that went on, the cramping stopped, but my period not showing up, obviously I didn't get my period. So I think a week after that, I was like, Hmm, it's been a while. And I always had super regular periods. Like I, I've never like missed a period before. Um, so I was like, as a joke, I was like, well, I'm going to go pick up a pregnancy test. I think I had Christian was running to the store or we went together and I was like, oh, I just want to pick one up as a joke. Like not a joke, but like, I knew it was going to be negative. So I was like, well, there's no point in wasting all this money on a stupid test if it's going to be negative. I we picked one up anyways. <clears throat> Let me go back home. Um. I went to the bathroom and took it and I had, I didn't cover it. I just had it set to the side and I was just like ignoring it. 
I was like, I know it's going to be negative, but I don't want to look at it. Um, and I was just meeting by myself in the bathroom. And so I, like, glance at it, and, like, I saw, like, one line. So I was like, oh, I had, like, the defeating, like, feeling that you get, like, the drop. It's like, oh, dang it. Um, and then I look at it again, and there was two, like, very dark lines. And I was like, what? I started freaking out, crying. And then, so Christian was, he had just stepped out of the bathroom for a minute. And I always wanted to, like, surprise him or, like, um, I don't know, give him a gift and be like, surprise, I'm pregnant, gotcha. Um, but he walked in the door and he saw me crying and he thought I was crying because we weren't pregnant. And he like came to comfort me and then I showed him and he was like, oh. he like picked me up. He was like, you're pregnant, you're pregnant, you're pregnant, you're pregnant. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> Um, and the first thing I said after, like, I calmed down was like, okay, I have to eat healthy now. <laughs> I was like, I gotta take the vitamins and do all this stuff. Um, the first trimester was not healthy food. Let me tell you, trying to get through that. <laughs> but that was my first comment. Um, and then we told our family my family, his family, um, and then slowly started telling everyone else. Um, but so a little caveat, I guess, which is similar to you, which when you were t telling your birth story last week, um, I didn't want to like interject. Um, but you said you had gone to midwifery school for a season or taken some midwifery classes. Is that right? Okay. Um, so I was enrolled in a midwifery school when we were first, when we were engaged, and then right before we got married is when I stopped. Um, and I always had an interest in birth <clears throat> since I was young, and I knew that, like, oh, that's what, like, when people would ask me what you want to do, I was like, oh, like a nurse or like a midwife or something along those lines. Um, So because of that, I already knew about home birth and the more natural side of things. Um, so I knew I wanted a home birth. Even going into our marriage, I knew that. Um, so yeah, I already knew that, that I wanted to have a home birth. <clears throat> but at that time, I hadn't heard of free birth. Um, really at all. Like it, it wasn't something that popped up in my mind. Like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so found out we were pregnant. And I think a week or two later, I was searching up. Oh, sorry. I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> yeah, no, um, just, uh, go until you find a good stopping point And then I have a question. Okay. Um, so I was Googling uh, midwives around the area. And if you know anything about midwives, like Oregon is like full of midwives. It's, there's so many. Um, yeah. So I was just Googling ones in our area and I just like picked one that sounded good. Didn't really, I wasn't very educated at the time about what to look for, like questions to ask, uh, what red flag, what's a red flag in a midwife, um, free birth, all the things I wasn't very educated on. Um, so I picked one, me and Christian, they had like a free consultation. Um, so me and Christian went and we walk in and it looks all like naturally and holistic. And it was a birth center and the midwifery clinic in side-by-side -side buildings. It was like old historic houses that they were in. Um, so we go into the clinic and sit down with one of the midwives. Um, and she was just basically like, explained a little bit very vaguely about 
what appointments would look like and how often throughout the pregnancy. And then she asked if we had any questions. Um, and like, as soon as we like started the consultation, like the vibe was like off. I was like, I don't know. She was just very like cold and like straightforward and like, so you have any questions? And it was like not very like personal. Like, I don't like this. Um, so I asked her a few questions. I remember asking her, um, because at the time I at least knew that I didn't want ultrasounds because of the ultrasound radio waves and all the things. Um, I knew that I didn't want any ultrasounds in the pregnancy. And so I told her that and I told her or I asked her what the other options were because I knew about a fetoscope. Um, so I asked her if, if, um, she would be willing to use that instead of a Doppler or ultrasound. Um, and she was like, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, we really just need to, need to get in there and get a peek, make sure baby's alive. I was like, oh, okay. And then I asked her about like during the birth, um, cause I didn't want a, um, a Doppler to be used during birth and she was not comfortable with that. Um, so she just flat out told me, no, like I need to blah, blah, blah. Like, mm, interesting. <laughs> I was like, okay, we left the appointment. We got in the car and I asked Christian what he thought. Cause he, he's very opinionated, but he will not say what he thinks in front of the person. He will wait till we get in the car and then he'll tell me his opinion. Um, my husband is so, the same. Yeah. Um, I will pause there. You can ask your question. Okay. Um, I just want to rewind a, a little bit um, and ask, uh, since you were pursuing, uh, I guess I'd call it a career toward midwifery at one point, um, you said that's why you knew that you wanted to have a home birth. Um, but what was your exposure to birth prior to that? Like, was there something uh, in in your environment, like people around you, maybe like in your mother or in your family somewhere, your husband's mom that had been exposed to home birth? Uh, like what was the kind of your engagement around that before um, that led you to want to do midwifery and then led you to also like understanding home birth and that being your first choice? Because there's most moms are not, you know, are not choosing home birth as their first option. Right. Um, yeah, my mom had hospital births. Christian's mom had hospital births. I was never exposed to home birth. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, I just always loved babies growing up. So that drew me towards birth. Um, but I, I don't know. I couldn't say I've, I've been asked that question in the other podcasts and I, still couldn't give them an answer. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. That led you down that route. Say that one more time. So there's just something that led you down that route, that route, whether it be the Holy spirit or, you know, whatever else, just something, you know, took you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the Lord. <laughs> Cause yeah. I have no answer. <laughs> so coming out of that appointment with the midwife, you said Christian is sharing his thoughts with you, and I'm sure you're sharing your thoughts with him. Um, can you give a little bit of background on what conversations had looked like with you and Christian before you knew that you were pregnant? Because you said that he was on board with you having a home birth. You know, had y'all discussed uh, in depth about that or like your desires? Did he agree with you or was he just kind of following your lead? Yeah. Um, so since his mom had hospital births, I fully expected like that he would be pro hospital birth and anti home birth and yeah. Um, but he was very open minded. Um, when we were engaged, I was <clears throat> in the midwifery program, so I would talk to him about birth. 
and like things that were going on in hospitals that I didn't agree with. Um, so we would have a, have conversations surrounding that when we were engaged and then early married and then through the year, not the years, but through the months, I would just talk to him about things that I learned or like, oh, isn't this stupid? Or like, look what they're doing. And like, this is crazy. Um, I can't remember one specific moment. It was kind of like all the things compiled together of like, him understanding that things that were happening were definitely wrong and how to prevent that is to not enter into (laughs) the situations. Um, So yeah, he was always on board with whatever I felt most comfortable with. Um, So we get back in the car and I asked him, I was like, so what do you think? And he was like, no, she sucked. No, we're not doing that. And I was like, at the at that point in my pregnancy, because I was so early on, and I hadn't really, as I said before, I hadn't really known or learned what I know now. Um, I was kind of like pressured. I felt the pressure to have a midwife because uh, it was just the thing that you did. Like either you had an OB or you had a midwife. Um, and I was like, oh. Okay, because I was going to just go ahead and book the appointment, even though I had all these, like, red flags going off in my head. I was just going to go ahead and do it. Um, So he was like, no, like, that's not what you want. Like, she said she wasn't comfortable with having, with, without using the Doppler. She said she wasn't comfortable with not not doing ultrasounds. Um, Why would you pick her? I was like, yep, you're right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um. Did you consider kind of like midwife shopping around and looking at others in the area since you said there's such a like number of midwives around you or in Oregon when you were there? Yeah. Um, Yeah. So after we left the appointment, I was like, okay, well, I'll just look around for other midwives. And then I just didn't. Ended up not looking around for other midwives. Um, And at that point, that's kind of when I found... Um, um, it's kind of convoluted in my head because I don't remember like what I saw first or where I saw it Um, but I can't pinpoint it back to Audrey Ross I believe is her last name Um, from A Joyful Birth on Instagram she lives in Oregon she's a birth keeper in Southern Oregon I believe um She's about to have her baby in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited for her. Um, hey, Audrey, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have so, talked about maybe getting her on the podcast, so y'all might hear an interview with her. Fingers crossed in the future. She <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe we could get her to tell her latest birth story. That would be cool. Yes, that would be really cool. Um, anyway, so one of her posts popped up. It was before she got as popular as she was as, as she is now. Um, so her posts were kind of circulating, and I saw one of her posts about I don't remember what, but it led me into finding free birth and um, being educated on all of the unnecessary interventions happening. Um, not just in hospitals, but with medical midwives, um, because just because you hire a midwife doesn't mean that there's going to be no interventions because there is a license that she is dedicated to. So, um, learned all about that and I was like, oh, that makes total sense. And I didn't want anybody there anyway, so this just works out great. (laughs) Um, so yeah, and it wasn't definite, it wasn't like a definite answer that, yes, I'm going to free birth at home with just me and Christian until maybe like six or seven months pregnant. Um, I knew I wanted to do it, but I was scared of what people would think and what our family members would think and say, because I'm a people pleaser, definitely. 
Um, so I just wasn't really saying. I was like, yeah, I'm looking around for midwives. Yeah, I'm still looking around. Um, so, yeah, finally decided. Seven months pregnant-ish. Um, I never... Um, you could say I had a wild pregnancy because the only testing that I got done was just a blood draw to see if she was a boy or a girl. Um, I was being impatient. I know you waited to find out the gender, but <laughs> no, I, I wanted to ask the question there, like, um, what, since you didn't get any other testing done during your pregnancy, like what made you want to find out versus not finding out? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was talking to Christian and I was like, so do you want to wait or do you want to like find out? And he was wanting to wait. And I was like, but I don't want to wait. Like, I want to buy all the, the girl clothes or the boy clothes. Like, I don't want to wait. So we found out really early. Okay. If it was boy or girl just because of my impatience. Yeah. Really, is How far along <laughs> were you roughly? Hmm. I know you can do it as early as eight weeks. I think I was like 12 or 13. Okay. Yeah. So you said it was about seven months that you just for sure decided that you were not going to have any sort of medical care provider um, at your disposal. Um, what did your prenatal care look like? Because for the average woman... When they think prenatal care, they think blood pressure readings, scale, weighing on the scale. They think, you know, listening to the heartbeat, probably fundal height measurements, um, you know, routine ultrasounds, things like that, gestational diabetes testing, all of these things. But you did not see a provider. So what did your version of prenatal care look like? It was a lot of resting and, but also being active, like going on walks, stretching, um, yeah, resting. Um, my nutrition could have been way better. I think like all of ours can. Um, so I'm not going to brag about my nutrition. <laughs> um, I had a prenatal supplement that I was taking. Um, now looking back, I wouldn't take the same prenatal vitamin. I would definitely do other things, beef liver, different magnesium, different vitamins um, <clears throat> for the next go around. Um, a lot of like mental prep because birth, like your body can do it. It's like, is your brain going to give out on you? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if you need to yeah have some encouragement in that area go listen to my birth story last week where i told <laughs> where i tell you basically the same thing um do the mental work part because <laughs> that you, yeah that's more likely to go out on you before your body is it's your mind <laughs> yep. yep um so i at that point i had found free birth society um and some other podcasts i don't remember the name um but I was just listening to a lot of other women's free birth stories um, to get like lessons that they learned, information that is help that was helpful in their births that I could use in mine, um, and just being more educated on topic. Um, so I was I was listening to like episodes. That's all I was listening to while I was home. Just episodes and episodes of free birth stories. And I was like, I totally got this. Like, I had no, I don't want to say I had no concerns because obviously like fears pop up in your mind and you work through them, um, which I did. But I totally trusted that the Lord built my body for this and it was going to do it. It was just going to do it. Um, so yeah, I would have, conversations with my husband um I would tell him like about the birth story that I listened to and 
things in it that I liked or um, things that I didn't like. If it was like a, a mom had previously had a hospital birth and then with her second decided to free birth, um, whatever. So yeah, we had a lot of conversations about what I wanted it to look like, um, what we would do in certain situations. Um, yeah. And I just really quickly want to interject, um, for the person who's listening and really kind of has no idea what you're talking about with the term free birth, can you quickly define that just so we can kind of give the audience an overview of that? The free birth is birth unfolding without a medical or birth professional present. So, um, for example, a free birth is the birthing mother and her husband. That would be a free birth. Um, a free birth is not free birthing your baby in a hospital. I don't know if you saw that go around. <laughs> um, we don't need to get into that, but <clears throat> yeah. Without you can, medical. You can have an unassisted birth with a birth professional present with a medical provider. You can have an unassisted birth. That's how I would put it. I, as a birth keeper, attend unassisted births but because of my presence being there it makes it not a free birth if i was not there and the mother and her spouse or if she wanted to have a family member or a friend there and that's who she chose to be in her birth space that would be considered a free birth but having the presence of a birth professional or somebody you know with a quote-unquote sense of authority um, in the space takes a free birth off the, off the board and, you know, you can still have an unassisted birth medically and physically in that degree. But yeah, um, just to clarify. So, um, okay. Continue forward from there. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, so me and my husband would have lots of conversations, um, and yeah, the weeks leading up were just us going on dates, out to Bucky's. If you live in Texas, you know what Bucky, Bucky's is. Do y'all have Bucky's? I feel like it's moved further south. It has, yeah. We, um, we hit them on road Yay. trips, like, down the main interstates and stuff, um, and I think it's hilarious, because it's like... If y'all don't know what Bucky's is, it's like a it's like Walmart crossed with Hobby Lobby, crossed with like a brisket restaurant, crossed with a gas station that has like a hundred and fifty pumps. It's extravagant and ridiculous, and they literally have so the beaver is the the um, logo for Bucky's, like the beaver Bucky, and um. I've seen t-shirts at Bucky's where it's like, uh, like take me, uh, take me to Bucky's. Like that's my version of a date night and has like the Bucky's like logo on it. They have shirts like that. there. <laughs> that's what that made me think of. You say no, what to dates at Bucky's, but you see, like you can get home decor there. You can get snacks, you can get gas, you can get a car wash and you can get a brisket sandwich. And like beef jerky, it's it it's like its own thing. I've never seen anything like it. It's crazy, yeah. But I love that. <laughs> that's awesome. In y'all's discussions, were there any like specific concerns or fears or like complications that you talked about? Like, oh, you know, what if this happens? Because generally, if you voice your opinion to the people around you, they're like, oh, what if your baby dies? You know, like, what if you bleed out? What if, you know, so was there anything that y'all talked about specifically leading up to that point? I remember saying, like, what if her shoulder gets stuck? I remember that coming up and, like, asking my husband, like, 
I wasn't really asking for him to be like, to give me like a solution. It was more of like a fear that popped up in my head. That was like, well, what if this happened? Um, so that's the only thing I remember co like coming up like specifically. Um, but in my head, I was just like, I mean, and he confirmed it also, but we were just like, well, like you'll move around and you'll like move your pelvis, maybe reach in there if that's what you feel is right. But, um, Ultimately, we're like, well, yeah, it'll, it'll work itself out. Um, I know true shoulder, like true shoulder dystocia, which is not common. Um, I don't know how to resolve it. You might know. Um, I just got a drink delivery. Um, <laughs> from my nice. husband. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> There has been, and we've talked about it off air, there has been a lot of um, discussion and controversy around true shoulder dystocia um, in the Instagram pre-birth world right now. Um, a recently live-streamed birth in, on Instagram um, and some commentating on the mother's self-diagnosis of a shoulder dystocia and declaring that it was not a shoulder dystocia because it was mother resolved and that true shoulder dystocia cannot be mother resolved. You have to have an extra set of hands in order to maneuver the baby um, appropriately. But I think probably the, the biggest point to be made there is that the fear around shoulder dystocia or the baby's shoulder being stuck or hung on the, the pelvic, um, the, the pubic bone, um, is so, so very actually rare, um, because babies, once their head emerges for some babies, it can t take time. Um, last week in my birth story, I said that he shot out, his head came out and then bam, he was out right behind it. Um, but there are some babies that their head comes up fully out. And then it, it, they take time to rotate and maybe another contraction or two to fully come out. They can be out, you know, for five minutes or so. Um, but the thing to note is that if the baby's head is fully emerged and the perineum is not stuck on the chin or higher up, as long as it is below the chin, then that means that the baby's shoulder is below the pubic bone already. So as, if the baby is taking its time with it all fully out, um, then it is not actually a shoulder dystocia. Now, if it is turtlenecking and like the perineum is up here, like a turtleneck above the chin, then that would be considered a shoulder dystocia because the, the shoulders have not moved past the pubic bone yet. But that's very rare to actually see. Um, and that's kind of what the controversy has been around this mother's self-diagnosed shoulder dystocia, which many moms can, you know, are concerned about because if you're alone, what happens if your baby is truly stuck and you don't have an extra set of hands, you know, what do you do? Um, but there are maneuvers, there's techniques that you can do, um, things like that. But that's besides the point. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that came up. Comments on that Instagram chaos right now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, yeah, that came up, and then, like, the common, like, what is it going to feel like was the biggest thing. It was like, what if it hurts? What if I don't like it? Um, yeah, that was my biggest fear. Just the unknown. Like, I would never done it before. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and my husband would just, he was so good. He would, like, um, just affirm me that, well, what if it doesn't hurt? What if it is a pain-free orgasmic birth, which did not end up happening? I think it can happen, but it was not my experience. Um, and I don't think it was yours either. Um, did you anticipate that going into it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you, do you feel like you found some level of disappointment 
like in the middle of birth, realizing that that wasn't true for you? Maybe not during the birth, but like, I don't know. Maybe like after I was like, well, that sucked more than I thought it was going to. Um, And I kind of had like, after the fact, I had a little bit of, what's the word? Um, like when you want to like stay away from something like, like avoidance on the whole topic. Like I didn't want to see other people's birth stories. I didn't want to see birth content at all. Um, so we can get into that in a little bit, but yeah, I definitely had some avoidance afterwards to the topic. Um, so yeah, going into it, I was just keeping like a positive mindset because there's, there's nothing wrong with going into it with a positive mindset there. You need mental fortitude. So I think working on that is good, but there's nothing wrong with going into it with a good mindset and then learning differently. Um, I don't know. I think that would be better than going in into it with a negative mindset. So, um, Yeah, so we just went on dates every night because at that time there we had like a life situation happen. So my husband, we received um, compensation that allowed him to stay home. Um, so he was home with me two weeks prior to the birth. And then he was able to stay home two weeks after she was born. So it was the Lord's grace. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. What perfect timing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I know so, you're, you're coming up on the birth story, but I really quickly want, um, I know we've talked about this personally as well. Uh, there was a car accident that you were in not long before the birth. Um, and so if you maybe just want to quickly share kind of like what happened or just like, the aftermath, you going to see the chiropractor and interacting, you know, with the medical system that way in your birth or in your pregnancy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the life situation I just mentioned was the car accident. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to get into it, but, um, yeah, me and my husband got into a car accident when I was 38 weeks pregnant. Um, the whole shebang EMS, fire police showed up um, and I was obviously pregnant um, and I was fine. Like I was able to get out of the car. I was having no pain. Um, They took my vitals, which I consented to. And then they wanted to transfer me to the hospital, which I denied um, because I was feeling fine. If I was like on the floor, on the grass, like obviously I would have accepted help if I felt it was necessary. Um, but I was feeling just fine. So, um, we knew that insurance was going to compensate us for like chiropractor visits and holistic health visits, since that's the kind of like care that we choose. Um, so we went ahead and took advantage of that. So went and had chiropractic visits for me up until, um, just a few days before I had her. Um, and then while we were choosing which chiropractor to go to, I, initially went to a chiropractor recommended to me by a family member and we show up and they're like, Oh, you're pregnant. We can't give you care until you see our OBGYN slash nurse. I don't know what her, like her, role was really the whole dynamic is so interesting to me because i've never heard of a chiropractic mm-hmm. office like having right. something like that so that's mm-hmm. so interesting that you just happen to walk into the very place <laughs> that that's the way that it is that's so weird um so i was like taken back by that and i was like red flags were going off in my head like okay i don't they're probably want to give, want to 
wanting to give me an ultrasound or something or do some testing on me. I don't know what they wanted to do. Um, so like red flag, I was like, mm, I don't want to do that. But I kind of went with it anyways, because I don't know. I just felt pressure. Um, so we went back with the nurse practitioner, wherever she was. Um, and in talking to her, found out that she like delivers babies in the hospital. Um, I don't believe that people deliver babies. I believe that the mother delivers the baby. I, oh my gosh, they get so many nerves. I hate when people say that. They're like, how many babies have you delivered? Well, I've delivered 2,000. What about you? Okay. I will give her two OBs who perform C-sections because they are physically delivering. They are performing a surgery to deliver that baby. But I think that's where it came from in the first place is obstetricians who are surgeons delivering babies. And then now because they have been co-opted into regular birth, vaginal births, they also right. claim delivering babies that mothers push out of their own bodies, which is right. not like you're not delivering those babies. You don't get to take that from me. Thank you. So, what was I saying? Oh, okay, okay, anyway, we go in. the nurse practitioner. Yeah. Um, so we go in, and she's, like, um, at her computer, like, uh, writing down notes, taking notes, like nurses do. Um, so she's, like, getting my information, and then she's like, okay, who's your OB? It's like, well, I don't have one. <laughs> And she was like, you don't have one. It's like, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, okay, who's your midwife? Well, don't have one of those either. Um, and she was just, like, giving me looks and, like, thought I was crazy. Um, and she was like, well, who's going to be at your birth? I was like, me and my husband. My husband was there at the appointment. Me and my husband. Well, do you have any, sorry, that was my dryer. Um, she's like, well, do you have any medical training? Like, are y'all nurses? Are y'all blah, blah, blah? And we're like, no. And she's like, okay. <laughs> she was like, not happy. Um, she wasn't rude. Like, she didn't like verbally say rude things, but you could tell that she was not comfortable with it. Um, so she kind of like, she wanted to like palpate my stomach, which looking back, she didn't ask. She told me she was going to do it. So I could have denied that. I just didn't in the moment. Um, so she kind of like felt around, like she could feel the baby's head down at the bottom. Um, she's like, well, baby's head's down. So that's good. And I'm not feeling anything abnormal. So that's good. Um, like yeah I know I feel fine I'm just coming here because y'all won't adjust me without coming to you <laughs> um so then she like writes in her notes a bunch of things that I don't know um and then she's like okay well it's against my advisement that you have your baby at home with your husband blah blah, blah. I get your little spiel and then we go to the chiropractor and he comes in he's like so I heard about the situation and what's going on I was like, oh, great. <laughs> the situation. Um, so I just felt like, like I was so stupid. I felt stupid and I felt like I didn't know anything. And like, they were like the people in charge that knew way better than I did. And I was being an idiot. Not, not the case. Not the case. Um, anyway, he just, sorry. No, I was saying just, to I mean, that's completely not the case, but like, when you walk into establish establishments like that, it's so easy to just like fall into the rhythm of the environment and feel like, you know, well, you're just, I don't know anything. I have to look to these authorities because like they have, they project just like expertise, you know, and like, they're going to make sure that you know that too. 
mm-hmm. and then it's yeah. against her advisement that you have your baby at home. And, right. you know, it's just, like, they just make sure that you know what the dynamic is when you walk out of the door. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely had some negative feelings after that, but we picked ourselves back up and we went right down the road to our naturopath. Um... And the reason we, the reason that we first didn't go to them was because they don't take insurance. So we would have to pay out of pocket and then be reimbursed. Um, so we were trying to find other chiropractors that would take insurance, um, that were natural. And my, it was my mom who recommended it and she's like, Oh, we love them. It'll be great. Mm -mm. Um, so we go down the street. It's literally like a mile away from each other. So we go down the street to our naturopath and um, they were amazing. They had had free birth moms come in before and get adjusted and definitely felt like calm and relaxed when I walked in the door. Um, so then continued care with them and they gave me some supplements. They gave me magnesium because at the time I was having like restless legs at night, um, which means you need to up your magnesium and There's another mineral that like aids in the absorption. I think it's copper. Yeah, copper and vitamin A. Okay. Um, so yeah, they gave me some supplements and then I just continued going to the chiropractor. I um, misspoke. <laughs> I, my brain yeah. was like, I said copper and vitamin A. Those assist in the, um, the absorption for iron, oh, but... Correct boron will assist for magnesium which is why a lot of supplements you'll see has boron as a part of it so side note okay um so yeah they were um i had a woman chiropractor and she was the sweetest she was like young in her late 20s she had a little baby boy who was six months old at the time um so just nice to be able to relate to her a little bit um, had our last chiropractor visit. And then I think it was three days after I had her after the visit, um, at 39 weeks in five days. And I was fully expecting to go 41, 42, 43 weeks. Like I had that in my head. That way I wouldn't psych myself out and get impatient. Um, but yeah, 39 weeks in five days. I was very surprised. Um, so she was born on the 1st of November. So the night before, which would be like early morning, but technically the nighttime, um, I had woken up to go to the bathroom and I woke up to like some period kind of feeling cramps. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I could sleep through them. Um, so I went up, went to the bathroom noticed them. It's like, oh, whatever. Um, went back to bed and then woke up that morning at like 11 a.m. Um, and then took a bath and me and my husband took a bath together. So I remember we were talking and I was having like that kind of cramping every 10, 12 minutes. And I remember telling him like, we could have a baby today. But I remember, like, I was just saying that. I I didn't know. I just said that to, like, get myself excited. <laughs> um, and he was like, oh, cool. And I kind of like, told him what I was feeling. And he was like, oh, okay. And he was just very chill about it, um, which I appreciated that he didn't. I just want to say well, I'm-, I'm really amazed at your ability to fit in the shower at almost 40 weeks pregnant with your husband. <laughs> I cannot imagine me and my husband being in the shower together that pregnant. It would have never happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my belly didn't get too big. Um, so, yeah. I was able to fit in, like, my normal... Obviously, you have, like, differences. But, like, I was still able to, like, squat down. And my belly just fit like a basketball, like, right between the legs. Um... So, yeah, it wasn't like we were crammed, but it wasn't. 
terribly uncomfortable. That was um, just a funny, like, mental picture that I was <laughs> imagining. So, anyway, continue on. Yeah. So we wait, get out of the bath, um, and then we go get breakfast, um, and then we go to H-E-B, which is our grocery store. Um, cause we were like, well, if she's going to come, might as well be prepared. We grab some snacks and stuff, which I ended up not eating in labor because that was the last thing on my mind, but I should have, I should have. Um, so yeah, we get, leave the store. We go to a local sewing shop. Um, it just opened right around the corner from our house. Um, and we go in and the owner's there and she wants to give us like this tour. And that's when things had like started to pick up a little bit. Um, so it was feeling more crampy and I was like, didn't really want to be around people. Um, and this lady was just going on and on about her sewing shop and la, 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 la. and I was like, lady. I'm not listening to what you're saying. <laughs> um, so then we leave, um, go back home, and then we go into the backyard and just hang out with our animals. Um, and I remember in the backyard, I started having some, um, I know some people call them sensations or contractions. I started having contractions in the backyard. Um, and I kind of had to like, it was kind of uncomfortable to stand. So I was kind of getting like down, like squatting. That was the worst. Oh my goodness. No, like the pressure. <laughs> no, thank you. So I just kind of like sat on my butt and then kind of like switched to either side and then maybe like on hands and knees a little bit. Um, but it wasn't terrible. Um, so we come in the house and it picks up. A little bit kind of stays the same for a while so we go and lay down in bed um, and at that point I couldn't sleep through them so we were laying down trying to go to sleep um, so I would lay down close my eyes one would come and then I would just like squeeze Christian's hand um, and they were getting more intense because I couldn't sleep through them and I was like when it would happen. Um, so that went on. We were in bed for probably like an hour or two hours. Um, and then I remember coming out to the living room and like trying to lean on the, the couch and like see if other positions would be comfortable. And the only position that I found comfort in was on all fours the entire time. So my arms were jello after that. It was... I was so tired from holding myself up. Um, so I go back and not back into the, 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 not the bedroom. I go into the bathroom, um, and get in the shower in the bath, use the bathroom. I was kind of like rotating between the bath and the bath, sorry, the bath and the toilet. Um, and then went back into our bedroom and I was definitely in active labor at the time, close to transition. Um, it was dark at this point. Um, so then I go back into the bathroom one last time in the shower and I'm on hands and knees in the bathtub. And I remember my body like pushed just once on its own. Um, and at that point I was like, oh, something's happening. Like I'm having a baby. Wow. <laughs> um, and a little bit of a bloody show came out, um, just some blood. And that was like the first sign of anything. Cause my water hadn't broken at all. Um, nothing was leaking, nothing. Um, so when my body pushed that one time, um, some blood came out and I was like, oh. I, Christian came in and I was I don't really remember if I said anything, but in my brain, I was like, look, Christian, look, like something's happening. Um, 
So then I get out of the bath and go back into our bedroom. Um, at this point is when I like forgot about putting my clothes back on. Cause other times I had put my clothes back on after a shower or a bath that I took, but I just, I didn't even think about it. I just, no clothes. Um, which was fine because it was just me and my husband. So it doesn't matter. Um, so I go back to the bed and I'm like on all fours on the bed, like roaring would be a good term is what I sounded like. Um, and yeah, it was intense. Yup. The majority of my labor, I would say, was very bearable. Obviously, it was bearable because I did it, but, like, it was good. Um, The last two hours were, like, I don't want to be in my body right now. Can I please leave? (laughs) Like, if there was a door, I would exit my own body. Um... Yeah, so we moved back into the bed, and that's when my body... I had, like, maybe 30 minutes of contractions after that first, like, involuntary push. 30 minutes, and then my body started pushing on its own. Um, And once that started, nausea kicked in, and, like... I think it's called dry heaving. Like, I don't think I was dry heaving, but it was like my body was about to throw up. But I didn't. Um, So I had a bowl in front of me. I still had the towel. I still had the towel wrapped around me. And it had like. It had fallen forward. So I had this big bath towel like wrapped around my neck. Hanging on my neck. While I was on all fours with a bowl in front of me. (laughs) Um, Which. Okay. Is this going to be TMI? I don't know if I should say it. No, I'm guess not. T- not too TMI. There's nothing TMI on here. Okay, we're we're gonna be um, honest, raw about everything. <laughs> um. So I don't know if you've posted about this, but I know a lot of birth people have posted like the connection between sex and intimacy and birthing your baby, like the environments very much the same. Um, so I love it to be dark when I'm being intimate with my husband. And I love to have like, sometimes I'll shove my face in the, like the pillows, like, cause I love having this covered for some reason. It like provides me a sense of security. Um, so I found that I had that exact same thing in birth. I had like my head kind of covered, my ears were covered. I was like in my own little zone with my towel in the bowl Um, and it was dark, like it was nighttime and our lights were off. So it was completely dark. Um, so I felt like in my safe little bubble. Um, so yeah, my body started pushing. I think the pushing lasted for like 40 minutes. Um, at that point, my husband started recording. So we do have the birth recorded, but, but in the air and, and all, um, and, at that point, my water still hadn't broken, so her sack was coming out first. Um, so it was kind of like bulging. Um, and I remember my husband asking me, he was like, is that the placenta? And I didn't even look. I didn't have the energy to look because I was, like, taking those rest breaks in between, like, so seriously. I was like, yes, I need this. <laughs> um, so I was like, No. I didn't even look. I didn't even know what it was. But I was like, no, that's not the placenta. Like, I knew that. Um, And he was like, it it doesn't look like a head. (laughs) Um, But it was her bag of waters, like, bulging out first. Um, And I remember all I was saying, and my husband even told me afterwards, he was like, you would not shut up. Like, you would not stop saying this one thing. And I just kept saying... I just want to take a nap. I just want to take a nap. I just want to take a nap. Like, I would have a contraction, and then I would be like, because my arms were jello. I was so tired. Like, I was like, 
I just want to take a nap. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. And he was like, I know. He said, I f he said he felt like so helpless because that's all I was saying that I wanted, but he couldn't give me a nap, obviously. Um, so, yeah. That lasted for 40 minutes, the shortest but most intense part. Yeah, it sounds like you would have probably benefited from like an exercise ball on all fours. So then you could just like hug it and not have to hold yourself up with your arms. That yes. was my thought. Yep. Now I know. But I totally understand about taking a nap because I did. And it was completely involuntary. It was just in between contractions. My body was passing out because I needed that energy so much. So yeah. I'm sure that, you know... Your your body maybe did not get to the point where mine did, where it was like, okay, right. we literally have to take a nap. There's no other option. But yeah, I'm sure that if you if you had gotten to that point, it would have probably done the same thing. Where you know your body is protective in that way, so you knew you you needed a nap, and if it had have gone on any longer, you probably would have. Yeah. Um. So what does this what does birth look like? As this bag of waters is erupting from your body <laughs> um so obviously I couldn't see so I was just like I can tell you now what it looks like because I went back and watched the video um I refuse to turn the noise on for the video because I do not I have never listened to it with the audio on I do not want to hear myself <laughs> at all no I, no, no, no. I have gone back and watched my birth video a couple times and there is this initial like oh I don't want to hear that uh -huh. but then I forced myself to do it anyway because I think I it's like made me confront that I thought I was not going to be loud and I thought I was going to be you know like and like breathe my baby out but i i'm a loud person by nature i just have a loud personality my family has lots of volume in our voices and my birth was very loud and primal and just like you said yeah. roaring like, <sighs> so yeah. Yeah. maybe maybe it's that like it's that confrontingness of not you know you said you were maybe anticipating having a pain free orgasmic birth and, you know, not, like, the evidence that that was not the case from the, the loudness, the volume of it. Yeah, it's very confronting to listen to. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, maybe one day I will listen to it, but... My husband, has, will, like... my husband won't rewatch it at all. Not at all. Oh. Christian, Christian likes to rewatch it. He was rewatching it, like, a couple months ago, like, on the toilet just for fun. And I was, like, sitting in the bath next to him, and I was like, please turn that off. I don't want to hear that. Um, but, yeah. So, I can tell you now what it looks like because I have watched the video on mute. Um, so, yeah, her, wa her, her bag of water is, like, bulging out, like, a good handful size of it, if you're not watching. Um, and then... It kind of like breaks and is like just one long piece of membrane hanging out and then her head comes through fully and then she just like comes right out after that. Um, and she, like there was not a bunch of water like I was like imagining. So, um, but yeah, I, I had her and then I turned from all fours. Um, she just kind of like Christian just kind of like guided her down on the bed. If there was like that much space, it wasn't very high. Um, so then I turned over like and sit on my butt. Um, and she like screamed immediately, immediately screamed. Um, and so, like, the scream was, like, what prompted me to turn around, um, because I was kind of, like, taking a minute to myself, 
Um, and I just remember like hearing that and I was like, she's like real. Like I have a baby and she's alive and it's real. Like that's crazy. Um, so I turn around and I pick her up and I start crying and Christian's crying and it's all in the video. Um, and I just remember, like, I said, like, I did it. Like, oh, my, I used the G-O-D word. I don't say that in regular <laughs> everyday life, but I did then. Um, uh, we were both crying, and then I pick her. I had already picked her up at that point. Um, and I kind of just, like, wiped her face off because it was a little wet. Um, and I remember saying, like, she's cute because <laughs> Throughout my whole pregnancy, I was concerned that I would have an ugly baby. That was my big concern. Um, I was like, oh, she's actually cute. Um, so, yeah. Very exciting. It was crazy. That's really funny that you say that because I had a very similar thought. Because I never saw my son on ultrasound and we didn't know that it was going to be a boy. And I had very jokingly joked that uh, my sister, um, who's currently expecting her third, she has a boy and a girl, um, both of which I have attended their births at home. Um, and <laughs> I love my niece and nephew to death. They're precious. And so I had joked that, like, if I was like, well, if this baby isn't as cute as they are, then I'm going to send it back. <laughs> They're just so cute. I want to eat them. I was like, if, if this baby ain't as cute as my sister's kids, then I'm just going to have to send it back. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I did, like, right after he was born, I was like, he's so cute. Yeah. yeah. So all the emotions of, like, this baby, I made this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Did you experience the ring of fire with her being in call as she emerged? No, okay, that was, I meant to say something about that, but I didn't thank you for reminding me. Um, so, like, as she was crowning, like, I remember, because it took a little bit, like, she would come out, and then it would go back in a little bit, and come out, and like, that's your body's way of, like, stretching you, like, that's normal. Um, and I was expecting that. Um, so, I remember when it was, like, I don't know that much open so like you could feel it like her head was like keeping my vagina open um and so I reached down and I remember like like saying like oh she's right there um and that wasn't uncomfortable um and then like once she started like coming out fully it was so much sensation and pressure and intensity I think I just lost all feeling um, I remember like feeling like as like the biggest part of her head was going to come out. I remember like feeling not pain at all, but it was like the pressure of like, there's no way that's going to fit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just everything happening, there was, there was no sensation, no pain. So I am very much appreciative of that. So. So now she's here and you have this new little Cuban that you've been waiting all these months to come. What does immediate postpartum third stage of labor look like? This is the sad part. <laughs> Not sad, but like my trauma part. <laughs> um, so She's here, and um, we sit there for maybe like three to five minutes, three minutes. Um, and then Christian went to go get a towel. Um, and then I asked him to like, I was like coming out of my birth brain into like logistic brain, and I was like, all the like things that needed to be needed to be done came into my head and I was like, well, we need a bowl for the placenta. No, 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 no. And so I asked for him to turn all the lights on 
because there was no lights in the house. So I asked him for, to turn all the lights on. I asked him to move me into the bathroom um, to take a bath and, like, I don't know, clean everything up. And the placenta wasn't even born yet. So did all that. That was, like, a huge shock because it was pitch black dark. I was in, my like, my birth bubble, and then all of a sudden it was like, and then we called our families before the placenta was even born. Um, so I had all these people, like, even though they weren't there, they were there on the phone. Um, so I had all this, like, interaction with other people. Um, and at this stage, right, you had moved in the middle of your pregnancy from Oregon to Texas? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're closer to your family now, like, locationally. Yeah. All right. Did you have anybody come over at that point or just call them on the phone? Yeah. So called my mom and my family, and then we called Christian's parents. Um, and then I was having like, um, contractions for my body to get the placenta out, um, which were painful. I didn't like them. I was like, um, but I wasn't thinking, I didn't know what they were for. Like, I just didn't know why they were happening in the moment. Now I know why they were happening. Like my body was trying to get the placenta out. Um, but I didn't know. And I was like, that's really weird. Like, um, and I remember like trying to pull on the placenta cord a little bit, um, to try and get it out. But I wasn't like dedicated to getting it out. I was just kind of ignoring it. Um, so then we move from the bathroom to the couch cause I wanted to lay down. Um, cause I was tired <laughs> and I was still having the contractions. Um, so I go and lay down with her and then like, or I was sitting on the couch, not laying down at that point. So it was really still uncomfortable and I was like, okay, like we got to cut the cord. Cause I was wanting to like wait until the placenta came out, put the placenta in the bowl and kind of keep it attached for a couple hours after. Um, at that point it had been an hour and a half um, and the cord was white and limp. So I was fine with, um, I was fine with going ahead and cutting it. Um, so sitting on the couch, we cut the cord um, and then I asked Christian to take her so I can go into the bathroom to try and get the placenta out. Um, and at that point, we went ahead and called my mom um, just because we needed some extra hands with, like, cleaning things and, um, yeah, just all the logistical things. So, um, and then I was, like, in pain, so I asked her to bring some ibuprofen over because I was just like done with it. I was like, I don't want this. Um, so yeah, I tried to get the placenta out one more time. And then I just was like, I am over it. I want to go to bed. Um, I will try tomorrow. <laughs> so we go to bed with the placenta still in. Um, and go to sleep. It was a great night's sleep. The and what exactly was the time that she was born? Yeah, uh, 9.40, I think, p.m. Around that time. Um, so go to bed, wake up at like 9, I think, the next morning. And I'm like, I wake up with like the dread of like, having to get this placenta out still, which sucks because you should be enjoying your baby and resting in bed without. Yeah. Um, so I call Audrey from a joyful birth, <laughs> called her on Instagram. Obviously she didn't respond for a while. Um, and I'm very surprised that she responded at all. So thank you, Audrey, if you're listening to this, um, so I called her and she gave me 
amazing advice. She affirmed me, encouraged me that I could do this. Um, and so I go back into the bathroom and I try get on the toilet, cough and squat, all the things, pulling on the cord a little bit. Um, and because it had been at that point, I, it was probably like midway through the day. Um, cause it took her a while to get back to me and I was laying in bed and all the things. Um, so at that point, the cord had started to disintegrate kind of. Um, and when I was pulling on it, it broke inside of me and I was like, well, crap. <laughs> um, so at that point I kind of knew like, well, I'm going to have to go in and have someone take it out because there's no way I'm letting someone reach their hand without any pain medication up my vagina to grab it out. No, thank you. Um, So yeah, we get in the car and go to the hospital. We Christian had called ahead and let him know, like, hey, we had our baby at home. Um, my wife's placenta is not coming out, so we're just coming in to get her admitted and get the placenta out. That's all we want. We do not want to admit the baby, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we get there, and they admit me and do all the nurse things, IV, the questions, um, and all of the nurses, except one, all of the nurses were great. They didn't like make me feel stupid. They didn't question my choices or, um, yeah, they were very sweet, but the OB on the other hand was not, um, she walks in and she's like, doesn't even look at me or say hi. She just goes straight to reading all of the um, paperwork that we had to sign. I'm like, uh, you could die, blah, 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 blah. The ch chances of this are this percentage and you could bleed out. And if, if it deemed necessary, you do want us to save your life and all, all the legal stuff. Um, so then after... Oh, and then she gave me a cervical exam, which I don't know what she was feeling for. Like, maybe she was, like, trying to see if my cervix was still open or not. I don't know. Um, that was my first cervical exam ever. I had never been to the gynecologist before. Um, so that was uncomfortable. And she was unnecessarily rough. I remember during it, I told her like, okay, 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 like stop. Because like she was being very rough. Um, well, I mean, even in comparison to like late pregnancy cervical exam or like middle labor ex cervical, cervical exam, like all of those are being done before the baby has exited. You now have this extremely tender area, and then she's sticking her fingers in you. Can't imagine. I am so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I went back to the OR and got a DNC. Um, they gave me a shot in the back to numb everything, so I didn't feel anything. Um, uh, that was super quick. Took like an hour. Um... Then they wheeled me back into the room where my husband and my mom and my baby were waiting. Um, and at that point, I was like, I had the, the shot in the spine. So I was in no pain whatsoever, feeling great. <laughs> um, so everybody was happy to see me. Christian was happy um, that it was pretty quick for the most part, like an hour. So wasn't bad. Um, kept my placenta. They came in the room and like my mom had brought a cooler with ice packs. So she took it back home with her and put it in her freezer. Um, it is still in my freezer now. Um, I think we wanted to like bury it with like a tree over top or something. Um, 
but we still have it. Um, so then we were in the hospital until the next day. Um, so we were just in there for one day. Um, they, I was like very protective over her. I kept her on me naked with a blanket <laughs> over both of us. Um, cause I didn't want them looking at her. Like I didn't want them to have any room to say anything. Like, like, oh, she looks a little yellow. We should really do like this kind of test. Um, so I just kept her covered. Um, and some of the nurses were like, so is she feeding okay? And I was like, yeah, she's great. You don't need to worry about that. Um, so they definitely took the hint that I was like, do not touch my kid. Um, so yeah, they were, besides those couple comments, they were great about it. Um, and then we went from the hospital, we went to my mom's house and they had like a meal prepared and I like got all cozy on their couch. Um, and then we went home. So Hadassah got to meet. Obviously, she had already met my mom and my dad because they both came over the night that she was born um, to help, like, with cleanup and stuff. Um, so, yeah, then we got back home. We got all cozy in bed and started to recover. And postpartum was, for the most part, postpartum was great. Um, I had... Oh, okay. I was telling you about this the other day. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so they gave me Pitocin, which I did not remember until weeks later because the side effect of Pitocin is memory loss. Um, but I remember laying in the OR and they were like, the OB was like, let's just give her Pitocin just in case. Um... So I was given Pitocin unknowingly, um, and during postpartum, I had like postpartum depression, anxiety. I was crying all the time. Um, I didn't like want it to be nighttime because I felt like I was trapped and I was like scared. And as soon as, um, as soon as it would start to get dark outside, I was like, started bawling my eyes out and yeah. So that wasn't good. Um, <laughs> besides that, postpartum was great, but besides, because of that, it was not great at the same time. Um, oh, no, 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 no. So where do you feel like you are with that right now? Like, in regards to postpartum depression and anxiety, are you on the And if so, what, do you feel like shifted what changed? Yeah, it was about maybe three months postpartum that it went away. Um, it just, like, slowly got better, slowly and slowly. I was... Um, I wasn't getting as upset as not like when nighttime had come. Um, I wasn't as depressed during the daytime. Um, so it, I think it was a gradual thing. And then eventually like three, four months postpartum, it was gone. Um, and now I would say I don't, I don't struggle with it at all currently. Um, yeah. Do you have any problems? Three. Sorry, say that one more time. Do you have any comments on how breastfeeding went with her? What's that? What that has looked like? Yeah. So when we were in the bathtub after she was born, she latched on, um, and it's been great. We've had no issues. Um, it was. Oh, I'm in there. Here, 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 here. Um. My nipples were sore for the first couple weeks, week and a half. Um, but yeah, it was great. She never had any latch issues. Um, 
I personally have never really stro struggled with like clogged ducts. I had one the day or two after she was born, but that was it. Um, so yeah, I would say breastfeeding has, has gone and is going very well. Um, and I will hit the six month mark with that too today as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will say that, and breastfeeding on its own could be a whole, like, episode, I'm sure. Um, but I see a lot of women complain about, um, like, not having enough milk, like a low supply, um, and we could get into all the reasons that that's the case. But personally, I like kept her on the breast. I would give the breast to her in any situation. And I really think that that helped. Like just putting them on, like it regulates your milk. Um, and I was not strict whatsoever. Like I know women are like, oh, I feed my baby every three hours and not before. But I think that's so dumb. Um and I offered to it, offered it to her whenever she wanted it, and to comfort her, and oh, and comfort nursing at night. Um, I I do it all, so I don't refuse her. Yeah, that's one of the the biggest things with maintaining a healthy milk supply is just constant. That's awesome that y'all have had a really good. Experience with that. Um, one of my questions now, you know, curious for the story. I'm sure there's someone listening who is wondering, you know, like what, knowing what you know now, would you have done anything differently um, if you were to go back with the placenta? And like, would you have managed that differently in the third stage? Um, you know, how would you approach that if you were to redo that situation? I feel like I had like a lot of regret surrounding that. Um, and I blamed myself for the longest time for the whole situation. Um, but you live and you learn. Um, but what I would do differently is I would stay where I had my baby and I would wait until the placenta came. I wouldn't move. I wouldn't turn all the lights on. Um, all of those in my eyes are like disrupting the birth space that you just had and your hormones are, but yeah, I totally believe that I disrupted the hormone thing that happens after birth. Um, and yeah, I would have kept my butt where it was for the placenta and then and then called everybody. I would also not call everybody <laughs> before I have the placenta out. And while, like, freshly, like, three minutes postpartum, I'm calling people. Like, no, I wouldn't do that again. Um, so now that you have gone through this experience of having a free birth, um, would you consider hiring a birth professional or someone in the medical space um, for future births, or is this what you want to choose the next time around as well? Um, I definitely want to free birth again. I also do want to, okay, if I hire somebody, I want to hire the person to show up after. <laughs> I want to hire someone to show up after just for like the logistical cleanup of everything and like maybe making meals and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't, I still don't want anybody there when I'm having the baby. So that has not changed. We're doing so much maneuvering over <laughs> trying to mother these two little babies of ours. Um, so logistically, uh, Maybe a little bit difficult, but that's all right. It was hard to motherhood. Um, there's another question that I that I wanted to ask. You. Um, 
Oh, oh. goodness, and now it's evading me. Um, but I guess, you know, now having gone through this experience as a first time mom, choosing not only home birth, but free birth, um, having some complications with your placenta and then resolving that, um, that is the hospital, uh, which um, I think it's worth saying that choosing a free birth uh, at home with your spouse or whoever is they you choose to have there does not mean that you are choosing to not engage entirely with the medical system. Like, in your instance, you saw that you had done everything you knew to do um, and were capable of doing your placenta and once you reached an impasse with your personal knowledge, you outsource that whenever necessary. Um, so I think it's worth mentioning that saying that you choose free birth doesn't mean that you are just at all costs choosing to, you know, stay home. You can, if you feel like something is wrong, you can go into the hospital. If that's, you know, what you need. Yeah. The point is um, having sovereignty in your birth and the ability to choose what is the risk for you, you know, determining your own risk rather than somebody determining that for you and putting you know, their interests above yours in your baby. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. Um, but let's say that if you were to give some piece of advice to a mom who is considering home birth, or who's considering free birth, um, what would you say to that mom? I guess just because of my own situation, my advice is to know that birth is not over until your placenta is out. Um, it doesn't have to be a scary thing. Uh, it's just something to like know in your mind that has to happen. Um, and for some women, like it just falls right out. For other women, sometimes you gotta do some core traction, get in some different positions. Um, it's not a one size fits all. Um, but yeah, it's really important, <laughs> very important that it comes out. Um, but yeah, birth is not scary. Birth is a normal part of your biological function as a woman. Um, so that would be my advice. And my advice, advice is also to not... I see a lot of women thinking they can control birth, like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to in naturally induce my babies. Um, but for the most part, I would say you can't control birth. Your body knows what to do. Your body's going to do it. Um, and just enjoy your pregnancy and let your baby come. Do not stress with the, the 40 week, oh, I got to get my baby out. Um, Babies come at all gestations, and yeah, just enjoy the last few weeks of your pregnancy. That would be my advice. And go take some date nights at Bucky's. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing your story with me, with our listeners. Um, I know that somebody will be encouraged by hearing um, about your pregnancy, your wild pregnancy, and your pre birth experience. Um, and I think, I think it's awesome that we can be, you know, honest. You are so funny. I think it's wonderful that we can be honest about, you know, not understanding every single facet of, of something. And still choosing it anyway, um, you know, and learning and growing in that experience um, and still walking away having had a wonderful birth experience. Yeah, so I appreciate all of your insights um, about birth and about pregnancy and motherhood and just sharing what it has, what it's been like for you uh, these last six months. And is, are there any last comments that you have? That you have don't think so. <laughs> Thank you so much. A lot of <laughs> yeah, we are we are um, 
waning down here very quickly on our on our time. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, I hope that you all enjoy listening to Sophia's first story that I did. It was so wonderful um, for her to share that with us. Um, very vulnerable to share your your pregnancy and your birth experience, especially whenever you walk away with it from with some trauma. That, that's very vulnerable to share that experience. So thank you for sharing that with us. We're very honored to hold that space for you. And um, <laughs> He's loving this part. Um, yeah, so we would love for you to follow along with us here on the podcast, subscribe, and you can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Um, you can leave us a five star review if you're enjoying um, the content that we put out here. And, um, I'm sure we will be talking a lot more about physiological birth uh, in the future. So um, be sure to stick along with us to learn more about that. Um, and maybe to have Audrey on uh, for an interview. We'd love to do that with her. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today for this episode of Motherhood and. Um, we hope that you have enjoyed being here with us. And we will see you next week uh, on the podcast. Bye.